Welcome to Cinematic Refresh. We will be talking about a mystery thriller movie called Luckiest Girl Alive. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. Listen closely to what happens. Spoilers ahead. The movie centers around a young woman named Tiffany, who now goes by Arnie. She appears to lead a picture perfect life. She lives in New York and works as a writer and junior editor for a well known women's magazine. She is engaged to her handsome boyfriend, Luke Harrison, and is planning their wedding. It is clear that Annie is haunted by a difficult past. One day, Arnie meets with Aaron, a crime documentary director. He wants to interview her for a short film he is making about the school shooting she survived as a teenager. He informs her that a former classmate, Dean, who is now a successful writer and gun control activist, referred him to her. Aaron tells Arnie that Dean wants her to be a part of the documentary, and he wants to apologize on camera for blaming her for being involved in the deadly school shooting. Not wanting to see Dean, Arnie declines to be involved in the documentary. Later, Arnie's fiance, Luke, tells her that his firm has offered him an opportunity to move to London. He asks Arnie to go with him and join a degree program in London that will allow her to write for herself. She agrees, even though her dream is to write for the New York Times one day. Aaron meets up with Arnie again and continues to insist that she do the interview for the crime documentary with Dean. Arnie refuses and mentions that Dean and his friends sexually assaulted her when they were in school. Hearing this, Aaron is sympathetic and promises to make sure Dean and Arnie do their interview separately so that she doesn't have to see him. Arnie finally agrees to participate so that she can tell the world her side of the story. The movie flashes back to 1999 when Arnie's mom drops her off at her new school, Brentley High. It is a private school with mostly rich kids and kids on scholarships. Arnie, who isn't from a wealthy family, is there on a scholarship. Arnie manages to make friends with the popular rich kids, Liam, Peyton, Hilary, and Dean. She also makes two other friends, Arthur and Ben, who are scholarship students like her. One day, Arnie is at a school dance with Liam, whom she has been dating. Peyton, Hilary, and Dean are also at the dance. So are Arthur and Ben. Arthur ends up getting caught with a flask of alcohol by one of the teachers. Hilary convinces Arnie to sneak away and go to an after party at Dean's house. While they are at Dean's house, they continue getting drunk. Hilary's mom shows up to get her, so she leaves Arnie at the party. Arnie is drunk so she eventually passes out. She wakes up in a haze and is on the bathroom floor, with Peyton between her legs. Her boyfriend Liam walks in and laughs, and leaves them alone. Peyton finishes and leaves her. Still in a haze, she gets up and stumbles down the corridor, but Liam drags her into Dean's room and assaults her. She tries to push him off, but fails. Arnie wakes up a while later in Dean's room and shakily puts on her clothes. As she tries to leave, Dean comes in and stops her from leaving and violently assaults her too. Later, she manages to leave the house and ends up at a gas station store, where she runs into her teacher, Andrew Larson. Mr. Larson takes her to his house, because she refuses to go back to her mother's house. She tells him what happened at the party, and he tells her that she has to report the boys. The next day, Arnie returns to school and apologizes to Liam for being intimate with his friends, but he doesn't seem to care. They meet up with Dean and the rest of the gang, who act normal, like nothing happened. Confused, Arnie goes to the principal with Mr. Larson. The principal is skeptical of her story and refuses to file a report with the police without her mother being present. But Arnie refuses to get her mother involved because she knows her mother wouldn't believe her, so Arnie decides to stay quiet and do nothing about the incident. One day, Arnie admits to Arthur and Ben what happened to her at Dean's party. Arthur tells her that Dean and his friends once took Ben to the forest, held him down, and defecated on him. But they got away with it because he didn't take action against them. But Arnie still refuses to take action against Dean and his friends. Arthur tells her to stop being scared and report the boys so that they don't hurt anyone else. A few days later, Arnie is with Arthur at school when Dean and his friends provoke her. Arthur gets angry at them and starts a fight with Dean. Later, when they are at Arthur's house, Arnie gets angry at him for starting a fight with Dean. He tells her again to report Dean and his friends for raping her, but she calls him a loser and leaves. So, Arthur and Ben decide to take revenge on Dean and his gang for everything they have done. 
On the day of the shooting, Ben and Arthur set an explosive in the cafeteria. Arnie, Hillary, Dean, Liam and Peyton all run to a different floor to hide. They watch Ben shoot Peyton as he begs for his life. As they run back to the cafeteria, Ben also manages to shoot Liam when Arnie doesn't wait for him and leaves him behind to save herself. Dean gets injured and is sitting on the cafeteria floor, paralyzed from the waist down. Arthur comes in with a gun and hands it to Arnie so she can take her revenge on Dean by killing him. Instead Arnie stabs Arthur in the neck, killing him. On the day of the funeral for the students that were killed, Arnie and her mum arrive but are denied entry. They find out that Dean lied to everyone and told them that Arnie planned the shooting with Arthur and Ben because she wanted to take revenge on him after he refused to be her boyfriend because she slept with both his friends. Arnie's mum believes the lies about her daughter. As Arnie finishes the documentary interview, Dean comes in on a wheelchair so that he can talk to her, but she leaves angrily. Later, she meets with her boss, who convinces her to write her side of the story for the New York Times. But she cannot write it without proof. So she goes to see Dean at the library, where he is doing a reading and book signing. She calls him aside and confronts him about the rape. He tells her he can publicly admit that he lied about her involvement in the school shooting, but not that he raped her, because he has a wife and three daughters. But Arnie pushes on and gets him to admit that he raped her, while she secretly records him for proof. Arnie ends up sending the story to the New York Times and they agree to publish it. It gets published, during her and Luke's rehearsal dinner. Luke gets angry at Arnie for sharing her rape story, because it will taint his reputation. He tells her that it wasn't necessary to expose her rapists, because two of them were dead and one was in a wheelchair, so they had paid the price. Arnie tells Luke that she is tired of pretending that she is perfect, for the sake of his reputation. They end up breaking off their engagement, and Arnie is relieved and they part ways. Arnie goes on to write for the New York Times. She receives a lot of messages from other women who have been raped and didn't have the courage to speak up about it. The End let us know your thoughts about Arnie in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos like this.